And welcome back. And thank you so much for joining me in today's video. As you guys can see, I have a special guest uh, today, and that is Orlando Miner. Uh, thank you so much for joining me, uh, Orlando. Yeah, I really appreciate it, man. I appreciate you bringing me on your platform, man. I've been watching you forever, man. So it's it's awesome to be on your platform. Thank you. That's cool. Well, I'm really happy you're here. And I um, actually found you because one of my subscribers uh, commented on a video of mine and said, hey, you should get Orlando on your channel sometime. And here we go. <laughs> <laughs> so, Thank uh, for subscriber. <laughs> yeah. So, for those who uh, may not uh, know you, if you briefly can explain who you are and uh, what you do. Yeah. So, we'll um, I'm I'm a commercial mortgage lender. Um, I've been doing this for about 15 plus years. I'm I'm also a real estate investor. Um, on, on the commercial side, a bunch of car, uh, apartment complexes, of office buildings, things like that. Um, so yeah, I've been doing that for about 10 plus years also. Um, I'm a CCIM, which is like the easiest way to describe that would be like a, a PhD in like commercial real estate. So um, yeah, I've been in the business forever and this is I, I love real estate. I love everything about it. I love the investing, lender side, underwriting. I do it all when it comes to that. And yeah, and that's the reason why I started my my YouTube channel. Nice. Yeah. So for those of you who don't know, you have a YouTube channel and uh, you do a great job with your videos, man. Like just really like top notch videos about finances, uh, real estate and a bunch of other economic uh, news and stuff. So, yeah, you do an amazing job. So hats Thank off you. to you, Orlando. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, I guess like for those who are watching today's video, you probably clicked on it because we're going to be talking about the commercial um market and so um not just you know I, I i would say that in general on this channel i talk about the residential market nationwide i know about this much regarding the commercial side here so that's why i want to bring you on to the uh to the uh, platform here and talk about that so um maybe you kind of talk about you know what are some of the challenges ahead regarding a commercial uh, market um because there's a lot of talk regarding how it's going to crash next year, maybe in 2025. Yeah. So just provide some context regarding what you're seeing and um, uh, for the viewers who are watching today's video. Yeah. Um, you know, commercial itself has been, has, I don't know, for the last, I would say 10 to 15 years, it's just been doing so, so well. Um, especially like, you know, the darlings of, of commercial real estate, which would be multifamily. Office has just been doing so well. And and now we're in a in a in, in the cycle where a lot of this commercial real estate, especially with the things that happened, you know, a couple of years ago with the pandemic and whatnot, kind of restructured yeah. a lot of these things when it comes to remote work and 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 just the way that things were going. A lot of money was pushed into the market, um, into the economy itself. And, you know, um, the way things go is, you know people really companies started understanding that maybe we don't need all of this office space you know individuals decided maybe um i don't need all of this room maybe i want to consolidate and so that's what you're starting to see with the commercial side where you're starting to see um you know grade a level uh when it comes to lend on the lending side of commercial which is multifamily, getting foreclosed on now because a lot of these guys just over borrowed and if that sounds familiar <laughs> it, it, it really is familiar it's just like 2008 but really heavy on the commercial side so uh, you know right now uh the commercial side is having their reckoning like like it was 2008 worth a lot of uh floating rates um that now um a lot of the the borrowers cannot afford you know imagine imagine having an apartment complex and you know you and it and it goes up by and vacancies go down and your income is low but then the interest rates go up because you have a, a floating rate you can't make those payments anymore and how long can you hold the property with it with expenses going up and your income going down and so that's what we're starting to see in the commercial side and on the office side. It's well, a lot real of briefly, like, too, can we, can we okay. also talk about like, I know that everyone who buys a house, too, sorry to interrupt, but uh, everyone who buys a no, house, no, no, no. You know, the vast majority use a 30 year fixed rate loan, right? Your, your interest yeah. rate's fixed for 30 years, and uh, you're putting down in the range of three to 20% plus, right? right? So that's the, uh, for someone buying a single family house, for example, 
or one to four units. But um, really, really briefly here, can you talk about on the commercial lending side, are, are you seeing, you're, you're talking about floating rates. So maybe if right. you can talk about like, what is the general uh, loan product that they're using to acquire these investments? Uh, that provides some context here, I would think. Yeah, yeah, it surely yeah. will. So the Thank loan you. product is normally a 20 year, a 20 year loan, right? So it's 20 year, 20 year amortization. And, um, and what that, and what that means is basically it's either 20 25 year but mostly it's 20 year amortization and then every five years you come back and you get the property refinanced right it can either be yeah. refinanced by the lender that already has it or you jump to another lender right and then that rate that they're having is a floating rate so it's basically based quarterly so whatever's happening in the market wow. if the fed raises the rate up by xyz you know amount then that next quarter your interest rate will go higher and your payment will go higher wow so you're saying here that because of that floating rate that fluctuates every quarter based on what the fed does with the federal funds rate that can impact your payment and you're saying that because uh we're seeing some vacancies therefore their income's coming down and therefore they're foreclosing uh very interesting yeah. and so also a percent and down is for a down payment where do you what do you what's it a is. typical so normally so that percent normally down is like uh 20 percent on like multifamily, 30 percent down on like a office building industrial wow because that's a big down payment for just to get foreclosed on i mean you're talking you're not buying a five hundred thousand dollar apartment building right it's just like <laughs> a million dollars ten million dollars like 20 percent on ten million dollars yeah. is like two hundred thousand dollars um, yeah. or $2 million actually. Right. So million. yeah, that's wild. Okay. So yeah, mm -hmm. maybe continue. I, I just wanted to hear about like that. Cause I don't yeah, know. No, like No problem. Go ahead, yeah. And, and, and one of the things that I think is, is troubling with that is you're saying like, okay, you put that money into it and that's the thing a lot of these companies a lot of these owners are handing back the keys to the bank be, and, and willing to, and losing that down payment money because oh they can't afford it anymore. I mean, the the holding cost of it could be is is dramatic. You got to remember it's we're talking about interest rates that went from 4% to 12% to 10%, 11%. So that's really that's a really dramatic jump. And Wait, that's 4 to the 12%? Why you hear. Oh, how's, yeah. how's it good? Oh, yeah. How's it good from 4 to 12%? I'm trying that's like 3x um, so yeah, that's three X. So, so if you do a floating rate and let's say a lot of, a lot of lenders will do what's called like a teaser rate where they'll, where wow, they'll okay. give you, yeah. um, like an introductory, you know, interest rate. And, and it's not really the actual interest rate, but it's a little bit lower than that. And then what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to get the property stabilized. And what does that mean? That means that you're trying to get, you know, you're trying to get as many people, get the vacancy as high as possible. And in that meantime, when the interest rate goes up, let's say in the next four to five years, if you're stabilized, then you're good. Well, these guys weren't stabilized and then their interest rate shot up. So what do you mean you're, if you're stabilized, you're good? I, 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 I assume that you mean like the value of the, of the investment you purchase is gonna be higher because you have less vacancy. Is that what you mean by that? Right, right, less okay. vacancy, correct, correct. Okay, so that will, that will help, that'll help the rate when they refi then. Correct, because think about it. If you if you go in and you, let's say you have an office building and at the point that you purchased it, it was at 70%, right? You're trying to get the vacancy up, I mean, you're trying to get the occupancy up to 90%. Right. So yeah. you want to get more people in paying you more income. Well, if in, yeah, at right. the end of three to four years, if your vacancy went from 70 to 30 percent, what can you do with the interest rate going up higher? Right, right, right. OK, so you're, you, what like investment properties you see that this is really impacting? Oh, it's easily office building, retail. Yeah. Um, those are like the number one. I mean, the values have dropped from easily 50%. I mean, you wow. it, on a good, on a good, on, in some places like in San Francisco, right? And in, in, in your neck of the woods in California, yep. yeah, you yeah. can pick up an office building, you know, 80% discount easily. Wow. Right but Compared to 2020, <laughs> 2021. Yeah. Holy correct. Correct. Welcome correct. Wow. But the difference is, but the, but you have to be able to, um, you have to be able to make those payments because 
yeah, you're going to get an 80% discount or a 70% discount, but there's yeah. no one, it's either going to be vacant or 20, 10%, you know, occupancy. That's what you're looking at. 10% occupancy. It's a, it's, it's horrible. It's rough. The, wow. I the mean, first thing that comes to mind is, are you aware of a, the Salesforce tower in San Francisco? Oh yeah. 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 Because yeah. I know that Salesforce, you know, built that building, which is huge. Yeah. And I believe they plan to, they were planning to sublet a lot of that space. And so I don't know what happened with that. Um, it'd be interesting well, they to see what happened. Well, they could sublet it. <laughs> yeah, all that, yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, this is a giant corporation, so I'm just curious like, how that all works out. But yeah, wild, uh, man. Okay, yeah. so do you foresee any solution? Uh, what, do you, like, what do you think is going to be, like, what's going to happen next year for this? Because... Um, it seems like that's not really going to change very much because we have a lot of people who are still working from home and a lot of um, office buildings that were built over the past several years. So yeah, what do you see is going to happen next year? And are there going to be some you know opportunities for investors or not so much? Well, I mean, there'll be opportunities for investors. There's opportunity for investors currently, right? So I think there definitely will be opportunities for investors um, in the future, but it's it's you it's going to be very hard to be an investor and um, I don't know and 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 for it to be come out cleanly. What do I mean by that? I mean that like, will you be able to purchase deals where you'll be making money like the day that you buy it? Mm. I, I, maybe not. Probably not. It's going to be really tough. I'm pretty sure there will be deals out there where you can do that. But the solution that most most of these guys are hoping for, which is why everybody is so you know excited about what happened with the Fed, is that they just want rates to come down. If mm. rates can come down, then it allows them to make their payments and not go into that foreclosure. And so that's what they most the hedge funds, the Black Rocks, all these guys that are are in the space, they're all hoping for the same thing. We need lower rates. They want rates to go back down because they all have floating yeah. rates. And when the rates go down, their rate the, their floating rates go down. Yeah. And so most of these floating rates, well, they're, they adjust quarterly. And so um, I was just thinking like, there's no like balloon payment, like five years. Like I was just thinking like, when would be the peak of delinquencies potentially um, for all these loans? Uh, but they're yeah, at the end of next year. That's when yeah. that's the peak. So it's okay. a time. It's Interesting. A time right? Yeah, it's right. A time because we happening. might get three uh, rate cuts next year. Right. And so would that yeah, be enough yeah. to help them? Wow. <laughs> yeah. 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 Very interesting. And so are you seeing that for people you're working with, because you're not full-time on YouTube, you're part-time on YouTube, right? right? right. Your main That's job right. is uh, owning a company and what you do, commercial lending. And so, yeah. Right. Um, um, what are you seeing today for um, for your business? Uh, you know, are you seeing people refi because rates have, or actually rates on, based on the federal funds rate are the same. So yeah, what are you seeing in your business? What uh, Give us some insight. Yeah, yeah what I'm seeing is, is that everyone's coming to you for refi cash outs. They're, they're, they're trying to capture the value that they think that their property has, but a lot of them are using old numbers from two to three years ago. So they come to me and they say, hey, Orlando, I'm looking mm -hmm. to do a cash out refi, refi. And then what we find out is after we do the appraisal that they've lost tremendous value in the, in the asset. So when, when that happens, more than likely, more than likely, it's underneath the value is underneath what they actually have the loan for or it's equal so mm. let's say that they have you know a two million dollar loan right they at that at that early stage when they bought bought it you know they put in their their 30 percent and maybe it was worth three million dollars at that point but now the the actual property itself mm. is actually worth two million dollars so wow. For me to give you money on that, that would mean I would have to give you 100% of what the value is, and that's never mm -hmm. going to happen. So the only way for you to refinance is to do one of two things. Either you have to bring additional money in, which yep. they don't have. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, right, right, right. Or, or you give the keys back to the lender and you go, hey, this isn't working. I've already lost my down payment and it's not bringing in any income. I, I'm here's the keys, and then they give it back wow. to, the, to the to the bank. Dang, some investors are gonna get destroyed. Um, yeah. So, and then what's the average like loan to value ratio for a loan, whether it's a refi or a purchase? I would say seventy. Seventy. So at least they have at least three percent equity or three percent down. 
when right. they're purchasing or refinancing property. And if, right. but if values but have come down gone? by 50%, then yeah. holy cow, that, that's a, a recipe for disaster. It is. It is interesting. And in, okay. commercial, and in commercial, your value is determined by income. So that's a really big thing. It's not like residential where you go comps, where you go, oh, that building down the street sold for X, Y, Z, and then that's the value. Mm -hmm. It doesn't work that way. It, it's all about your balance sheet. When I look at your pro profit and loss and I say, oh, this year you made X, Y, Z. Well, if this year was a bad year for you, you lost all of that value. Well, you, you mean it's mainly your income statement, not your balance sheet, right? Yeah, yeah I'm sorry. Your income yeah, statement, yeah, yeah. correct. So, okay, yeah. So That's the accountant to be talking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah mainly yeah. the income, they look at the income, the revenue coming in, in, in order to determine value rather than, oh, this apartment building sold next door. It right. sold for $20 million right. yesterday. So they're really looking at the value of an investment property or commercial property is really in the amount of revenue that's coming in. Yes. That's your thing? Yes, for sure. Okay. That's how it if you're seeing commercial. Yeah. And so if you're seeing revenue coming down quite a bit, then obviously that's impacting values, which would make people a lot, a lot, I would assume uh, a lot of time not being able to refi. Um, so yeah, wild. Okay. So the, a lot of them are going to be so, really so you can see, kind of biting see their nail. Like the yeah. Right. Cause I can see like, okay, well they're like, come on fed, like lower the rates tomorrow. <laughs> like, like, and so, yeah, that's going to be interesting to track what's going to happen there. Interesting. Um, yes. Anything else you more want to add more about the commercial real estate market? Maybe we briefly talk about residential too a little bit too. Um, no, I mean that's pretty much the 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 the, the quick and um, easy answer on that, and 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 explaining exactly what's happened in the market. We just at the very end of the day, it's everyone's looking at the Fed and seeing what they what he's going to do and when he's going to cut rates. We have this timeline, which is the end of 2024, when majority are a lot of commercial real estate um, balances are coming due when it comes to loans. So everybody's, you know, biting their teeth, biting their fingernails and, you know, it's kind of just waiting to see exactly what's happening. And that's the reason why you see all of this news when you go on to like CNBC talking about maybe he's going to do six, seven cuts. I mean, that's a dream <laughs> yeah, right. on the commercial There's side. No it's a dream. Yeah. 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 We were talking before we started recording uh, a scenario could um, come out where rates have decreased for a 30 year fix for people buying residential properties down by about 50 basis points or about a half a point right. in the past two days alone. So rates uh, today, according to the, this is uh, today, which, which is on Thursday, is at 6.62%, <laughs> the lowest rate since mid-May this year, which is absolutely insane, the giant decrease. I know yesterday, which was on uh, Wednesday, that was one of the biggest single day decreases in rates on record, which is absolutely wow. insane. So wow. what we're talking about um, before we started hitting the record button here, is that uh, um, how will that impact the housing market and demand? Um, because um, a wild scenario that could come into play next year potentially is that if rates come down to um, a level in which it causes a lot of buyers to get off the sidelines, they were looking at a rate about 8% about two months ago. Now it's at 6.6%. .6%. Will that increase demand and cause prices to increase and therefore inflation to be um, <laughs> out of hand again? <laughs> Um, that's just a wild scenario. And so like I, we were just talking to the CPI report that was announced on Tuesday, the yeah. increase of that 70% of that came from shelter costs. So the housing market rents and home prices greatly impact inflation. And of course we want inflation to come down, uh, which will help out these, um, commercial investors here. So, yeah, I mean, right. what do you think is going to happen next year regarding all that? Because that just could be a mess uh, next year. Yeah, I just think that like a, like we were talking earlier, I think with the Fed, I I I think that he's he's not going to make any decisions unless he sees the data. So he and yeah. his team are just, you know, eagle eye in that that data, that information to kind of see exactly what's happening. But the problem that I see, what we spoke about earlier, is that a lot of the inflation is associated with shelter, associated with housing. So yeah to truly truly go after inflation you have to do something with housing and from my viewpoint 
there has really nothing been there really has not, uh, nothing has really been done when it comes to housing a lot of the things that the fed and everybody else seems to be focused on are things like energy and things of that nature to bring down the and bring down inflation um i don't think personally when i when i look at it he hasn't done anything to really go after um housing you know it, itself yeah. and so i'm very interested to know that if that's the portion and he wants to get down to 2%, then what is he going to do directly to affect? And what happens if he can't do anything and let's say he cuts rates and then that makes inflation go up higher? What happens then? You know, yeah. it's wonky. <laughs> it's totally wonky because like the Fed has really limited capabilities in order to tame the housing market unless they start increasing rates again, right? So. Um, right. Um, in my opinion, we need more homes for sale and right. a lot of people are locked in right now because they have very low rates and they're not selling. So we're not seeing any forced selling either because unemployment is still uh, relatively low as well. And yes. so um, it's going to be interesting. So um, actually, we're just having a collaboration with the um, local uh, real estate appraisal here in Sacramento. His mm -hmm. name is Ryan Lundquist. And he stated that um, builders um, here in Sacramento, the greater Sacramento area, they have to pay $100,000 in fees per house that's built. So that's really impacting the amount of um, uh, home building in our region. We have a lot of home building, but in general, um, if those fees were to get reduced, we would see more home building, which of course would increase supply, causing prices to uh, potentially decrease or not increase as much. Um, so in my opinion, that's the best way to make um, housing more affordable is to increase supply. Uh, I don't know. What do you think about that? Tape. Tape? What's that? Yeah, right. To get rid of the red tape. Yeah, right. Um, yeah, I think um, I think obviously that is the case. Like and you want to increase um, you want to increase inventory. But I also believe, too, that there's a there's a lot of inventory that um, it, that will come on that that can come onto the market. I mean, I'm not saying that it would like, you know, drench the market in inventory, but then you have things like there's a lot of things that are in the, uh, the Airbnb side. There's a lot of things that are uh, coming up with if employment really, uh, you know, tanks yep. and whatnot. Right. All of those things, I believe, will increase um, increase inventory. And I yeah. also believe and I say this on my channel all the time that um, even though individuals may even though individuals may have like that low interest rate right now, everyone's situation isn't your situation and people yeah. still have to move. People still yeah. get different jobs. Things still happen in the market. And um, I just think that maybe, maybe um, the rates in coming down, I don't think anyone, I, at least I'd hope that people aren't thinking that rates will get back down to 2%, 3%. I, I don't see that happening. <laughs> I dream. My dream. You know. <laughs> yeah, it is. But, yeah. but but you know maybe when if you get to between this six and five percent range, maybe that'll spur a lot of people to put the the homes on market and get that inventory up. So that's kind of yeah. what I'm looking at. But I think that most individuals just have to look at. Um, you just have to kind of look through the lines. You have to do a lot of research and you can't just hope that uh, that one of these homes will just pop up in your lap. Yeah, I mean, I, yeah, I, I totally agree with you because I think that unemployment is going to be a key thing to track next year uh, because if people are maxed out on their credit cards, I mean, we already know we have um, all time record highs for credit card balances yeah. on a national level, right? So that's wild. Um, and so if people start uh, or with people who have credit card balances start losing their jobs, they're going to be forced to sell. And like you right. said too, you know, people do make a decision to buy and sell uh, regardless of what's happening in our economy and our housing market because they're making uh, lifestyle decisions. They want to be closer to their grandkids. They want to move closer to their new job, et cetera. And we've seen um, over uh, 3.5 million uh, existing home sales uh, this year, I believe, uh, so far. Mm. And we'll probably have around 4 million this year, even though rates have been more or less above uh, 7% all year. Um, yeah, so it's gonna be interesting to see what happens next year. I'm actually pretty excited to see because there's gonna be a, a lot of volatility and um, there's so many uh, factors that impact our housing market. And so uh, uh, that are completely beyond our control too, right? So yeah, it's just kind of fascinating to see how it all works. Yeah. Well, Orlando, I, I'm, I'm, oh. yeah, go ahead, buddy. 
Yeah, no, I was saying that I'm just super excited to kind of see exactly what's going to happen. And just like you, like you said, there are there are there are a bunch of things that we are that are out of our control. But I, I say it on my channel all the time. The one thing that you can control is to make sure that you're on top of your market. Every market is yeah. different. And it's right. super, super important that if you are looking to buy a home, sell a home or just in the market in, in itself, um, you need to do the research. You need to do the work. You need to keep an eye on what's happening in your market so that you're prepared whenever that time comes that you can go ahead and make that decision. Yeah, well said, because uh, you're talking about national trends. There's, that means that we're just talking about the median, right? So there's some areas right. where uh, prices are going up greatly, like um, Hartford, Connecticut, the Midwest, the Northeast, uh, whereas uh, Austin, Texas is down big time compared to a year right. ago. So uh, every housing market is different. And um, yeah, it's well said, if you're looking to buy or sell a house, it's really important to get a clear understanding about what's happening in that market, because it can vary greatly compared to national trends, right? True. Um, well, Orlando, thank you so much for joining me in today's video. This is actually your first collaboration of many, I hope, yeah, buddy. For sure. <laughs> uh, well, thank you. Anyone uh, anyone who wants to uh, follow you, uh, can you just um, you know, tell us where they can find you, how they can find your YouTube channel, et cetera? Yeah, for sure. Um, just go into YouTube, type in Orlando Miner. Um, yeah, just you'll find my channel there. I upload three times a week and we talk about all things finance housing uh airbnb all of it we talk about all of it and so please come over i would love to have you over and we have a good time awesome yeah if you guys are new to orlando and if you go to his channel just say hey jason sent me <laughs> comment on his channel <laughs> i appreciate that <laughs> yeah, not a not a paid promotion <laughs> uh, well, Orlando, I appreciate you, buddy. Thank you so much for joining me in today's video. And everyone who's watching today's video, check out Orlando's uh, YouTube channel. Uh, his his uh, videos are um, very, very well crafted. So um, you. You know, please check his uh, channel out. And thank you so much for joining me in today's video. Like and subscribe. And of course, share this video with anyone who you may feel may get some benefit from it. Hope you guys have an awesome day. Look forward to seeing you on the next video.